Hi everyone, Janie here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make these adorable farmhouse style refrigerator magnets that can also be used as embellishments on other projects. And I made these with leftovers from my last project. So let's head on over and get started. In my last video, I showed you how to make this awesome farmhouse style ladder that could be used for so many things. And then I told you, don't throw away those ends that you cut off because I'm going to show you what to do with them. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So these are the ends that I cut off from the one gallon paint sticks that I used to make that ladder. And for today's project, you can use them as they are, or you can glue two of them together to make them thicker. It's totally up to you. I'm going to be using my Beacon Fabri-Tac to glue some of these together, and I'm going to glue the printed sides together so they won't show on either side. I'm going to use the thicker ones for the refrigerator magnets, and the thinner ones will be perfect for embellishments. For this first one, I'm going to be using my favorite crackle paint technique because I love that weathered look. And I'm using chalk paint, but you can actually use any paint you want. My preference is to start off with the dark color as the base coat, and then once that dries, I'm going to be adding a layer of Elmer's glue and a layer of a lighter color chalk paint. Of course, you can always do the lighter on the bottom and the darker color on the top. It's up to you. Okay, that's dry, and it's time to move on to this next step. Now it's really important to have two paint brushes ready because you do need to put the layer of paint on right over the wet glue. And be sure to put on a nice layer of the glue. You don't want it too thin, and the thinness or thickness of the layer you put on will affect how the crackle works, so it's definitely something to experiment with. And the cracks develop as it dries, so don't worry if you don't see a lot of cracks right away. If you want to learn more about this technique, I'll have a link below in the description box to my tutorial, and also a link on the screen as my video is ending. So to finish this off, I tied some twine around the top, and I added some wooden heart embellishments. Next, I'm going to paint the rest of them with white acrylic paint. I actually ended up painting four of them. I painted the front and the sides, but I didn't paint the back because it's not going to be seen. But you could always paint the back if you wanted to. For this next one, I'm going to be stamping a cute little bunny rabbit on the front using Stazon ink in Timber Brown. Stazon is a fast drying archival ink that is appropriate for all surfaces. I love that stamping isn't just for cards, but for home decor projects as well. By putting the stamp on a clear acrylic block, I can see exactly where I'm stamping. I love how that came out. Isn't that just adorable and perfect with that little red checkered ribbon? For this next one, I'm going to be decoupaging a napkin onto it. You can also do this with tissue paper. So I'm just cutting it down to a smaller piece to make this easier and removing the back layer of the napkin because you only want to use the very front one and keep in mind that some napkins have two or three layers. It's not always easy to do, but if you dampen one of your fingers, sometimes it helps to pull the napkin layers away from each other. Next, I'm going to apply some Mod Podge and then carefully place the napkin over the top and press it gently to make sure it completely adheres. Do not rub it because that will tear the napkin. Just pat it gently. And then I like to use a wet paintbrush, or in this case a water brush, to trace around the edges that I want removed. It just makes it easier to tear the excess napkin away. And you can always use a fingernail file or a sanding block to remove more of the napkin if needed. And once I was happy with it, I added another layer of Mod Podge over the top to make sure that it sealed completely. I added a pink and white checkered bow, and I think it came out beautiful. Okay, on to the next one. For this one, I'm giving it a distressed age look by using a stiff paintbrush and Memento Lux ink in Toffee Crunch. This is an archival mixed media ink, so it will work perfectly for this. And I just get some ink on the brush and then gently swipe it on until I get the look I want. You can add as little or as much of this ink as you want just to get the right effect. And once that was done, I used my Beacon Fabri-Tac to glue on this red checkered bow and that cute little cow embellishment that I made years ago with shrink film. 
You all remember Shrinky Dinks, right? If you don't remember Shrinky Dinks, I think I actually made a video a long time ago using them, and if I did, I'll put a link below in the description box for you. So if you didn't already know this, I love cows, and I live in cow country, so I had to use this, and I think it is going to be my favorite. Isn't that just cute? Okay, for this last one, I cut out this Farm Fresh vinyl sticker using my Cricut and the Country Life cartridge. Of course, if you don't have a Cricut, you can use any stickers you have. And I think that the black and white checkered bow looks perfect with that. What do you think? I think this is going to look perfect on my refrigerator. Okay, so if you're going to be using these for a refrigerator magnet, you're going to need to add a magnet to the back. And there's a variety of choices, including scrap magnet that I got off from some photo magnets we got from Shutterfly. Some magnets may have an adhesive backing, but if they don't, you can always use your hot glue gun or something like Beacon Fabri-Tac or Beacon 3-in-1. And those options are also great for adding flowers. I just cut these off those little flower bundles you can get from the Dollar Tree. Thank you all for stopping by. These were just a few ideas to inspire you, and I hope you have fun making some refrigerator magnets and embellishments of your own. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye-bye. If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, I hope you consider that too. And if you do, be sure to click the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos or giveaways. And I hope you stop by Crafters Castle on Facebook and also Crafters Castle Challenge Blog to enter your creations.